The floor plan generator of Cabinet Pro has numerous capabilities. This tutorial is not meant to teach how to use the floor plan, rather it is meant to simply show some of those capabilities. Please see the specific video tutorials at the Video Help Center within Cabinet Pro to learn specific aspects of the floor plan. Once the floor plan is done, its cabinets are ready to be processed for a full cut list, door reports, bids, invoicing, and CNC machining with no other work necessary. In addition, the dimension floor plan as well as its individual wall elevations may be printed in either millimeters or inches by the click of a button. To see just some of the design capabilities of Cabinet Pro, let's delete this floor plan and start from scratch. If we wish to make custom walls, we can tell Cabinet Pro what angle we wish to make the wall along with a length of the wall. When the Draw Wall button is pressed, the wall is drawn. Cabinet Pro remembers the last point on the wall so you can simply continue to draw walls as you wish and they will be automatically joined to each other. For example, if I want to go in this direction, a distance of say 200 inches and click Draw Wall, the wall is drawn. From that point I can go in another direction like 45 degrees down and let's say 100 inches and draw the wall and then maybe down some more uh, straight down let's say 200 inches and draw the wall again and then let's say I want to go in this direction or let's say 45 degrees lower say only 50, uh, 30 inches and then finally, let's say we want to go to the left a distance of 150 inches. We can continue to do this and draw walls in any way we want. Once we finish, we can also put a custom floor in. Let's try that. To draw a custom floor, we can simply click the points where our floor should exist and Kevin Pro will join those points when we are finished click each of the corners of our room and when we're finished I think I'll go all the way out to this point when we're finished we click refresh and the program will create our custom floor Alternatively, we can select one of the pre-made floor plans with one to four walls, or if we are making a garage, one of the garage floor plans showing a single, double, or triple garage. For this demo, we have told Cabin Pro that we wish to make a couple of L-shaped walls. At this point, we can use the custom walls feature again to modify or add walls to this ready-made floor plan. Once our walls are finished, we can autofill a wall if we like. At the autofill screen, we have many different options of how we can uh, how we want the wall filled. When we have selected our options, we press the OK button to fill the wall we selected with cabinets from our library. When Canon Pro snaps cabinets to each other in face frame mode, whether it is done by this autofill feature or manually, it snaps the face frames to each other. Here you will notice that although the face frames are flush, a gap exists between the sides of these two wall cabinets because of the existence of a face frame reveal. Even though these are all separate cabinets, we can join them together if we like to make long single custom cabinets by using the join command. Let's join these four cabinets together as one long cabinet and then replace it onto the floor plan. This is now one long cabinet. We can access our cabinet library and make individual cabinets one by one if we want. We will select our double drawer bank as an example where it will be initially placed at the bottom of the floor plan. Let's snap this to the left side of our corner cabinet. Now let's make a wall cabinet and snap it to our upper corner cabinet to fill this space. Again, we access our cabinet library and select a simple wall unit. Note that the height of our cabinet will be automatically adjusted to match our room standards for this particular job. We are not stuck with how that cabinet was defined in our library because our wall cabinet is first brought into our cabinet editor where we can modify every aspect of our cabinet. Like before, the cabinet is then placed at the bottom of the floor plan. Let's now snap it into uh, our upper corner cabinet.
Now let's place a range at this location because that is where the customer needs his range to be located. We will select Appliances and then choose to place a range. As usual, the item is initially placed at the bottom of the floor plan. Let's snap it to the side wall and then move it into position. We first snap it to the wall of our choice, wall number two. Now, let's move it 120 inches away from the edge of that wall. From the bottom edge as we're viewing, we want to go 120 inches. Since we are in face frame mode, we will make a single hood cabinet to be placed directly above this range. We can either access our cabinet library as we did before, or view the wall cabinets we have in our library and simply select our hood cabinet without changing the screens. The hood cabinet will be taken from the library and placed in the cabinet editor just as it was before. This time, we will snap it directly above our range. And then move it to the wall. One way in which we can place a cabinet between the range and our other cabinets is to first determine the space between the two and then have Cabinet Pro automatically create a cabinet of that width. We find that the distance between the two objects is 90 inches. When we create a cabinet this time, its width will equal 90 inches automatically. Again, we are in our cabinet editor to modify our cabinet if we want. When we are finished, we press the OK button to place it back onto our floor plan, where we can then snap it into place. Noticing that we have left out a backsplash, we can edit the cabinet to add a backsplash. In addition, these doors seem too big, so I will also place a style in the middle to make four doors all together. First, our backsplash, and then our doors. We want two doors per opening, or excuse me, two openings, and then also two doors per opening, and the program will automatically place a style in the middle. Placing it back onto the floor plan. Placing this cabinet back onto the floor plan, we can see that our changes have taken effect. We can also drag cabinets wherever we wish. Let's make another cabinet and place it in the middle of the floor plan. To show another feature of Cabinet Pro, I will copy the cabinet I just made. To copy a cabinet, we first highlight it and then press the copy command. This will copy the cabinet and take us back to the cabinet editor to alter anything we wish before placing it onto the floor plan. I've modified this new cabinet slightly by taking its rear backsplash off and giving its front corners a 3 inch radius, its rear corners a 5 inch radius, added some corbels, and gave some extended overhangs to the countertop. This time, instead of snapping the cabinet to a wall or another cabinet, we are going to drag it into place. Wherever we move it, we can simply snap it to that location. We can also rotate the cabinet to a desired angle of placement by clicking the Rotate button and pressing it as many times as we want to rotate it the number of degrees that we state. We can not only dimension the floor plan at this point, but we can also obtain our dimension countertops by themselves. Here we have just our countertops, and if we click Dimension, those countertops are now dimensioned. What happens if we have an angled countertop? Let's go ahead and alter this countertop so that we have a 45 degree angle here. To make viewing easier, I shortened the countertop and made a 22 and a half degree cut on the left side extending outward and a 20, uh, excuse me, a 45 degree cut on the right side extending inwards. You will see that when we dimension countertops, the program also places the angles at which the ends are cut onto the drawing. 
Now let's restore the job as it was prior to my altering the countertop in order to get our original countertop back. What you are looking at now is much more than an undo function. Each time you, you perform an operation that changes the cabinets or floor plan in a job, Cabinet Pro does an automatic backup of the entire job. So you can go back in time to restore any job to how it was designed at a given date and time. The screen also tells you what you were doing at a particular time just before the backup was performed. In this case, I will restore the job as it was prior to my altering the countertop. When I click on that backup, Cabinet Pro will display the floor plan as it was at that time as well as all of the cabinets in the room. When I restore that backup, we will see that the countertop is as it was prior to my altering it. This backup feature, by the way, is absolutely invaluable. Because of it, we can proudly say that no customer has lost his or her work in well over five years, because even if you purposely delete a job, you can still get it back. We can now dimension the floor plan, dimension each wall elevation, and obtain dimension section views through any cabinets we select. Cabinet Pro also allows the viewing of three views at once, where each view can be independently altered or modified. For example, we can move this around, or we can go back to our working floor plan and move it, and work on it as well. If we have an odd floor plan that we will use in the future but do not want to draw it again, we can save it to our floor plan library to be retrieved for a future job. We can change all the doors and drawers at one time that not only affect the drawing, but also the cut list, bidding, and CNC. If we want to choose this door for all of our wall cabinets, we may do so. Here we have changed all of our wall cabinet doors to Maple Cathedral. Now let's change all of our base cabinet doors as well. We will change our base cabinet doors to Maple Square Panel instead of Cathedral. We can also change the flooring, the window, the walls, any doors we have placed, or excuse me, any appliances that we have placed, and um, all walk-in doors as well by the same method. We are now ready to generate our reports. We can, for example, produce our very accurate bid for this job, where we can display as much or as little information about the job as we want. But regardless as to how much information we are or are not displaying, our bid, which in this case is $14,000, will be the same. We can also produce our cutlass reports, optimization, and CNC either separately or all at the same time. Here is a total cut list for our lumber. This would include face frame, uh, doors, if we're making our own doors, and any other parts that are made out of lumber. Here we have all of our panels. Now our panels are going to be optimized as soon as I press the, as soon as I exit this cut list. Our entire job is now optimized showing the best cutting pattern on our various panels. This shows that we will require 33 panels altogether. When I press the OK button, these panels and the parts contained therein will be assigned the proper machining and will be cut out on whichever CNC router you may have. This CNC code happens to be in G-code, but Cabinet Pro also supports WoodWop, Hops, Styles Machinery, BSA Works, and Zilog used by SCM routers, as well as various panel saws. This video has gone into many of the features of our floor plan generator, but there are many more that we did not cover. Hopefully, what we did manage to cover will give you a pretty good idea of how Cabinet Pro works in the making of a real job.